It is a starting, a startling statistic, sorry, that every parent should be aware of. According to a Canadian addiction study, one of every six teenagers has, at some point, abused prescription pain pills. Tonight's inside story is about grieving and a family's attempts to stop your kid from being that one. Avery. And Gorge, you know, telling uh, kids to just say no to drugs is not very effective. So how do you possibly get through to a teen that doing illegal drugs can kill you? If you're the Patrick family from Elmira, Ontario, you take your pain and you put it online. This is Austin Patrick, a 17-year-old skateboarding fanatic. This is a picture of him with his mom, Christine, cuddled in behind him. It's posted on a Facebook page that she set up last month, just one day after Austin went from this to this. What you're looking at is a timeline, documentation of an accidental teenage drug overdose. April 5th, Austin was at a party with friends. Kurt and Christine knew he dabbled with pot and alcohol, but that night he tried something new, snorting crushed up hydromorphone, a prescription painkiller opiate up to eight times more powerful than morphine. It's shocking to, to both Chris and I that, that he would take opiates. We just even, don't even understand why he would, why he would do that. Austin is raced to hospital in critical condition. Your decision almost from the moment when Austin was taken into the emergency room, overdosed, was to start documenting it, was to get out your That's camera right. and to start documenting it visually as well as online. I really wanted to record every moment of it so that his friends could see what drugs do to you. And I mean, it, it was not a pretty sight seeing him lying in that, in ICU, um, tubes coming out of absolutely everywhere you could imagine. The hospital bends the rules and lets streams of Austin's friends see him in the ICU. They, they couldn't believe it. Like they really, they never thought that this would ever happen to any of theirs. April 9th on Aussie's Update, Christine writes, Right now, I just want some signs that Austin is in there somewhere, a twitch of a foot, a blink of the eye, anything. One of the ways for me to cope just in that moment was to uh, set up a blog. Little did I know, though, that it, it would spread like wildfire. Like, you know, there was at some points where we had over 10,000 people following the page. April 10th, Austin looks very comfortable. He's still unconscious. When we got the results of the MRI, basically what that showed was um, a significant amount of Austin's brain was dead as indicated by large black areas. Austin left us peacefully this morning at 5.33 a.m. with his dad, brother, and I surrounding him, holding him, and telling him how much we love and adore him. He looked so sweet and innocent, just as a little 17-year-old boy should. In this somewhat public way of telling Austin's story, do you feel as though the kids are getting it? They were putting themselves in Austin's place, finally. They imagined, and thinking, they were imagining yeah. their own parents dealing with this, and the pain and the grief. And they would not want to put anyone through that. Austin's death has scorched the heart of his big brother and his parents. It's inked in this friend's arm. When people look at these pictures and like they see um, like even all those tubes and like all like what it what it's all kind of about like what happens it kind of it is an eye-opener the hope is that that his his friends people who don't even know Austin will see that drugs they, they can and they will kill you drugs have a serious effect and even if it's that one-time use you don't know what you're dealing with and uh, consequences are, are deadly There's just a lot more to life than uh, an artificial high.
brain mm. didn't heal in that six days from when he was first taken into the ICU. Uh, every other part of his body did repair itself. Uh, Austin's heart, his lungs, his kidneys and liver, as well as pancreas, were all uh, donated to save five people's lives. A lot of courage for that family to go public with this. And the other thing, I guess the thing they're fighting against is this perceived invincibility that so many young people have. That, oh yeah, I can do that and I'll live through that. And well, that's... Obviously, they can't. You can't, and the drugs are so different now. I mean, prescription drug is a huge, a massive problem with young people right now. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to let you know on our website there is uh, information on a program, what they're trying to have a skate park in Elmira uh, named after Austin, and so we'll have mm -hmm. details on, on how you can sign an online petition to make that happen on our website. All right, thanks for that. Thank Reach you. out to Avery to discuss tonight's story on Twitter, the address at City Avery. The Inside Story airs every Tuesday and Thursday, and all segments are up on our website, citynews.ca.